everybody that I told that I was moving here told me not to no. move. Everybody was super against it. Nobody supported it. I'm not going to lie. I kind of believe them with the insecurity part of the country because the police harassment was like a lot. For me, it was kind of like, did I make the right decision? But I think as, as COVID like passed, it got like a little bit more simpler. Like me and my sister always say we forget sometimes that we're living in a different country because we've just kind of gotten so accustomed to things. Yeah, it's very seamless. I think people move here because labor is cheap. You can give out a job to somebody, but it, that also comes at a cost because you're paying somebody cheap, you're gonna get probably cheap work and not something that is like to your standard. So many people wanna come back. Like, I feel like everybody's kind of seeing America as like, you know, it's a third world country with the Gucci belt, they say. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back again to another amazing episode and this is the Diaspora Transition episode where we have dialogue with diasporans uh, who decided to relocate from the diaspora back to the continent of Africa. And as you guys already know, we are here in Nigeria having dialogue with diasporans so also looking at properties, uh, bringing you some you know, investment opportunities uh, here in Nigeria. And uh, today we do have here someone very special, a young woman who decided to leave the US behind to relocate uh, to the Lagos, Nigeria. And that we're about to have a dialogue with her. I said, why she decided to do that? So without further ado, Precious, welcome on the show. Thank you for having me. People are watching you. They might they know your name, but they might not know who you are as a person, your background. Briefly introduce yourself to the people watching you for the first time. My name is Precious Ogunlaya. I moved to Lagos in 2020 to open up a beauty salon with my sister. Um, the name of the salon is Leia Beauty Studio um, in Lecky. Um, we offer hair, nails, makeup, lashes, training, um, entrepreneurship opportunities because we do do booth rental. Um, so people who are not being able to actually own their own salon, um, we offer suites. So. Oh, I see. so people can come in into your salon? And rent a booth, basically. Oh, wow. So like a lot, basically in America they have that like salon suites. Mm -hmm. um, so we brought that idea here. Interesting, that's yeah. smart. Wow. Look, let's go back to your story a little bit. Obviously, I'm, I'm hearing some acid. You were born in the U.S.? I was born in the U.S., Chicago, Illinois, okay. um, to two African parents. Um, my mom is from Ijebu. My dad is from Akura. Okay. Um, I originally came to, the first time I came to Lagos was in 2013. 2013. Okay. I were was, your together? My parents are not together, but I came and competed for Nigeria. Um, for Team Nigeria in track and field. Um, so I've kind of always been interested in being in Nigeria. Um, I, even in Chicago, I only grew up around Africans, so I really don't consider myself a diasporan, but... Um, you don't consider yourself a diasporan because you've been back and forth? Right? Because I've been back and forth, yeah. I guess now with me just settling in, it's different, but not too much, like, I guess, of a mm -hmm. culture shock or anything like that, because I'm very much used to being around Africans. Interesting. Interesting. Let's just dive a little bit back, though. I mean, how was, like, living in the U.S., like, and why did you decide to leave that behind? Because normally, me being a Ghanaian, we quite, we have the opposite of it. We think in that going to the U.S. and then settling there would give us greener pastures. We are more prosperous there, but you kind of did the opposite of that. You know, to re-establish your, your salon and your head, you know, beauty brand down here. Talk to me why you decided to do that, the beauty gritty of it, um, the trigger points to that decision itself. Um, I don't really feel like it's like a huge story, but I guess I moved during the time of COVID. Okay. Um, and I was working at a salon, but under somebody, um, and I felt like, I wanted a change. I didn't want to stay in America anymore. My sister was kind of feeling the same way and she always kind of wanted to live here a little bit more than me. So we just decided that maybe it would be an easier transition if we did it together. So did the pandemic trigger that for you? The pandemic really triggered it. I think it put everything in motion. Since my sister said she was going to Nigeria, I said I was going to follow her. And yeah. Okay, interesting. How long have you been back now? Four years? Four years. Let's talk about the initial you know, time where your sister and, and yourself probably told your parents about you moving back. What was their first <laughs> reaction like? <laughs> I think everybody that I told that I was moving here told me not no, to move. Really. Everybody was super against it. Nobody supported it. I'm not going to lie. Wow. Um, they just thought, like, why am I going when it's such a hard time in the country? Like, so many things. The insecurity. Like, a lot of people just feel like it's super insecure here. The... Um, lifestyle would be harder to adjust um, and they just felt like you know 
I was born here and like why not make it you know something of myself in America mm. ra- rather than going back where people are trying to leave like, definitely splash. I see. That's where I usually got most of the time. It's like, why, why, who, who why would you do that? You know. And these were coming from like your friends who were like African Americans or Caucasians or even Africans. These were themselves. coming from my family members, friends, and all African people mm. who were telling me that. I telling me this. I don't. My American friends were so excited, like, oh my God, you're leaving America! Like, I can't believe it, you know. But I think in this day and age, Africa is not looked at as bad. Everybody yeah. wants to I be mean, African. Right. Because of Afrobeats, because of Berna, Wizkid, and likes of others, like everybody wants to be African and everybody wants to come back to like Africa. So mm-hmm. I think my American friends were more excited for me than my Nigerian friends. Wow. But then you, 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 they didn't, it didn't stop you, right? No. So you decided you packed your bags and then you just left? I packed my bags. I think I remember going to the airport with six luggages and paying six, six luggages and paying like 1200 in excess baggage fees alone. Just to come here, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. So what what year was that? That was in 2020. 2020. How has it been? How has the journey been? I mean, from touchdown. Obviously, you coming back back and forth. So I don't think you feel any different. But how has that journey been since touchdown 2020 till this day? When we originally came, it was a time of COVID. So during that time, the country was still on lockdown. Um, but it was weird because like you couldn't go out from certain times and I would say like I kind of believe them with the insecurity part of the country because the police like harassment was like a lot so for me it was kind of like did I make the right decision like this country kind of seems to probably like I told you so yeah okay so but I think as as COVID like passed it got like a little bit more simpler like Mm -hmm. So me and my sister always say we forget sometimes that we're living in a different country because we've just kind of gotten so accustomed to things. Now. Yeah, it's very seamless. Apart from that business that you've said, is there any other thing you're doing? Yeah, I started recently working at a real estate company um, called Brit Properties okay. um, as corporate communications marketing manager. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's been nice. It's a new start, a new journey. Even when I was telling my friends back home that, oh, I got a new job, like everybody's like, wow, like you're so like highly favored and yeah. super blessed that you were able to just kind of like go to a different country and like basically yeah. start up a new life for yourself. So Tell me more about that business. Um, I applied on Indeed and I got the job, they, I, like a normal interview process. And I actually think the interview processes here are like much longer. Like I had a test, it was like three interviews. Wow. Yeah, it was like a very long process, but um, definitely worth it. Like, wow. I mean, look, I want to be able to get more picture, right? Which, where did you go to college? I went to the University of Miami, Miami? in Coral Gables. Okay. Um, I was there on a full ride scholarship. Okay. Uh, I did track and field. I was a thrower. Um, I studied sports administration and psychology. I then went to beauty school, okay. Trekochi Uni- Beauty University Culture, and studied cosmetology, a year program. I was working at a salon, and then I transferred to my studio suites, mm-hmm. um, and just been hustling. I'm, I would just say I'm a hustler. I yeah. kind of have my feet in everything. Mm-hmm. I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I want us to be able to address that mindset growing up, and did you grow up with both parents? No. No. Oh, I grew up with my mom. Your mom. I see. How was it like, you know, being being? I grew up to a single mom, a single mom How with raising like? three kids. She was a nurse. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing was peaches and cream. I started working when I was fourteen. My first job was a lifeguard. My sister was a lifeguard, and then I decided, oh, she's making money. I'm gonna make money. Interesting. So I went and did lifeguard training. I'm a very good swimmer. Um, so it was just kind of like fourteen years old. At fourteen. That's not legal, is it? No, you can with a parent consent. Oh, really? Yeah. It was a summer job. So with a parent consent, limited hours and limited pay, <laughs> I could work. But I didn't see it as work because yeah, I worked fun. at mm-hmm. my condominium pool. Mm-hmm. So I would leave my house, walk to our like neighborhood pool, and like it was like seeing my friends and just saying, oh, you can't do that. Oh, break time. Like It wasn't anything serious. But because I was like a very good swimmer, I was able to like secure the job, I feel like, because like of the that. testing. Interesting. Would you say your journey, you know, relocating back, it's not easy, is it? No. What are some of the challenges you've been through so far? I think the biggest challenge is the light. The, the twenty light. the the twenty four hour yeah light okay. thing. Like not having a consistent light, you don't think about it as much. 
or like you don't even it's not when you say light electricity you don't think about it as much like in america how everything just runs here it's like oh wow we actually need this we actually need that like well why wouldn't they do this you know so i think light because it causes like when they don't bring light that's fuel you're burning sometimes we're having fuel scarcity when you can't get fuel you can't run a business so it really does put a damper on a lot of things the next thing i would say is a sense of entitlement here entitlement. Can elaborate on that. getting some workers that think they can just like you they take you give them an inch they'll take a mile okay. and i hate to say it but it's like you know, you would offer somebody the best you can and they don't know themselves like what you've done to even put yourself or them in that position. But they just think because you have this accent, you have it all together, you have it to pay for it. You know, like what happened to us in our salon that I felt like was the biggest thing was our gen blew up and due to the people not taking care of it. So that's like a whole finance that we were never expecting to have to come out of pocket to do it. It almost burnt down the mall. So like, yeah, to that extent. And, and it's just due to people not, you know, they don't take care of the things like how you would take care of your stuff. You have to micromanage people here. And I think that's a huge thing that I just didn't expect to have to like do, I guess. And the third thing would be? Traffic. Traffic, oh, Traffic. You tell somebody, oh, I can be there at this time, and then next thing you know, you're stuck in traffic for about three hours. Wow. Yeah. Because, and then another thing, it leads down to the fuel scarcity. Like, things that you don't think in America, mm -hmm. like it's fuel, mm -hmm. road, light, police, like, you don't experience those, like, roadblocks in America like that. Mm -hmm. But here, you can consider that an everyday thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been going to a moment where you've been through all these challenges and like stop for a minute to be like, you know what, let me just call it a day for Nigeria. Go back to um, Chicago, go back to America. When I first got here, I was doing, <laughs> the first time was four months yeah. and I went back. What? And I said, I need a break. Really? And then I came back again. I think I stayed home like maybe five months, came back and I did eight months. Then I went back and I did like, I went back to Chicago and I did three months. And now I've been doing a year from like a year and then I'll go back for like two months. That has been working for me, but now I want to be more permanent. And I think me getting the job at the real estate company is going to allow me to be more permanent here. But yeah, it was, when I wasn't used to it, I was like having to take breaks. So, but my sister was different. She didn't have to take breaks. Hers was like, for her it was very seamless, yeah. But me, like, I was very stressed out, like, with the police and with traffic and, like, every day just seemed to you be, like... so used to the system in the, in the West. I was used to, like, a very cool, calm system. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, cool, calm here, but, like, in a different way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to... Me being a business owner, I didn't have to wake up to go clock into work. I'm the owner. People are clocking into me. Right. So, here yeah. Here, yeah, you need to micromanage them. And I guess I didn't think about that as being a first-time business owner. Like, oh, yeah, I am in charge of somebody. So I guess in that sense. Mm, interesting. Now you're doing real estate. Your own business is about beauty. What other opportunities uh, have you identified that you think has the potential to benefit any diaspora um, considering moving, relocating to doing business here in Lagos, Nigeria? A business that I would love to do and I would tell people to do is restaurant. Restaurant. Anything that's like westernized here, like they can have a sense of they're in America, is gonna sell. Really? Yeah. I think everything is very like clout based. Instagram, like social media is a huge thing here. So anywhere people can take pictures and enjoy themselves and post, like your business is gonna grow immediately. Like once they see, like, oh wow, this is a nice place that we can come and take pictures, can guarantee your business will do good. Because of the mindset of everything West is best. Everything West is best. That's what I've noticed here. Like, as soon as they think like, oh, Americans do that, we got to do it too. So. I like that. What do you think, I mean, are the three things people really coming down here to, to watch out for? Um, Diasporans trying to really. How do you mean? I mean, look, you've been through it yourself. You, you came to a realization that building a business here in Lagos won't do very well if you are not there yourself to micromanage it. Have to so the few things you'll be able to learn throughout your process here uh, in Nigeria. 
if you're to give that as an advice to people coming who are contemplating and doing business, uh, you know, building a business here, what would, what would that third thing be? Um, my first point of advice would be um, people uh, feed off of vulnerability mm. and niceness. So mm. if you give off the idea that you, oh yeah, it's okay, oh yeah, it's okay, they're gonna abuse that. Mm. Um, and it sucks to say, but yeah, you kind of have to be very stern, very set in your ways, a little bit mean, so they can take you serious, mm. even if, with your really? accent. Yeah, like I've heard the same thing to in Ghana. Because that like you can't be nice to your employees. No, employees, even the people at the market, like they can sell a Nigerian something for five k and sell it to you for fifty k. So I, that's another thing I would say, a big thing that I learned here when we were designing the salon. We spent a lot of money that we didn't have to spend. Because and we were duped. Because we were duped. Wow. Going to the market ourselves, we saved a lot of like more money. Doing things yourself rather than just people. I think people move here because the idea of you labor is cheap. Yeah. You can give out a job to somebody, but it, that also comes at a cost because you're paying somebody cheap. You're going to get probably cheap work and not something that is like to your standard. So. You just always have to be on top of things, I guess. Another piece of advice is hmm, trust your gut. Um, if something doesn't seem right, probably don't do like don't do it. And thirdly, I would say stay prayed up. Like you know, I didn't coming here. I I wouldn't say I wasn't spiritual, but. I become very spiritual because it's like really? people always kind of remind you like yeah you have to stay prayed up like you have to like there's people that How are praying I'm always reminded of their spirits you know mm -hmm. there's people who are like I didn't believe in juju but that's something that people constantly throw at you here especially if like you're doing good they see you as doing good you never know what person may be envious and yeah they just always tell you to stay prayed up like prayer is a huge thing even at the job that i started they pray on mondays like as a group like prayer is very very like put in to the everyday lifestyle here interesting now look i mean people have said so many things i moved to nigeria to establish a business with just two thousand pounds i've heard numbers like five thousand i've heard forty thousand i've heard hundred thousand right um how much money would you say you you range you moved back and how did the transition went with that amount of money moving back and what you could have done different? Um, I myself, I came here with 25,000 mm -hmm. um, and that was to do the salon and live. Mm -hmm. um, my sister came with a little bit more. Um, I think our salon, we probably put 15K in. 15K into yeah. the salon. And do you wish you, you could have brought more money or? It was not, I mean, elaborate on that a little bit. Like I said, I feel like we did spend a lot of money, unnecessary money. Um, so in that aspect, I feel like it was a little, not, it wasn't even expensive, mm -hmm. but the money wasn't allocated correctly. Mm -hmm. You would probably need a, oh, more money. Mm -hmm. I would say 30000 would be basis like the lowest amount that you could probably come and start a business here with you know property is expensive material is expensive they go by the dollar rate here so you can't think like oh I'm coming here and I'm gonna be no the exchange rate doesn't really mean anything like they're going by dollars so you're gonna be paying a dollar plus a little bit more because of the duties taxes and everything so yeah Interesting. Um, look, expenses wise right because I'm saying this because normally we want to be able to, people are literally calculating it right now to say, look, Africa looks cool now. It's better since December. People are seeing the footages. They're seeing Burner Boy. Africa is lit. People are calculating their budget to see if they are capable or they, if they, they are equipped enough to move down here. Do you think it's cheap living here? Is it affordable? Is it, is it something people watching can be able to afford? And if so, how much does it cost to even live a normal life, a standard life, not too over the top? Um, you can use your life as, a, as a, an example in this situation. Okay, so me for an example, my first apartment here was 4.5 million, mm -hmm. um, and I shared it with my sister. Um, we both put in like 3,000 
for the year for the rent that was including our, our agent fee and some other agency fees you know that was for the first year was 4.5 but the rent was like actually 3 million but the other fees was like 1.5 but um and i would say that had 24 hours light security you had a plant system like a generator we had a gen generator okay. so they when nepa took light it automatically Turns brought light yes yeah, okay. so 24-hour light um that was when i first moved here i now move to my mom's house my mom built a house and i definitely thought it would be cheaper because like oh i don't have to pay rent anymore but however she moved to somewhere that is a new area so light is not brought all the time okay, so you have to use the gen all the time and the estate runs their gen from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So I would say that is a huge shift for me, like not being able to have light 24 hours. So I would say for the people who are coming to move here, it is cheaper because we pay rent monthly in America. Here we pay annually. So you can think about having your money set and you don't have to worry about rent anymore. However, you want to pick somewhere that you know that you are gonna be comfortable and those come at a higher price. If you know you're willing to sacrifice some things, then yeah, you can find a cheaper um, apartment. But I would say for like two bedroom standard, you would probably pay from like 2.5 to 4 million. Interesting. Would you say, I mean, look, you've experienced challenges. Would you say this is enough to make you give up on this challenge? Nothing comes- With the Nepal. Yeah, because nothing in life comes easy. Something that we're going to struggle with here, you're still going to find another struggle in America. Like, America, you have to have so many licenses and, you know, building permits. And you can't do certain things that you do here in Lagos. Like, people can't offer drinks in salons in America without a liquor license. It's impossible to get a liquor license in America. Yeah, it's very, very hard to get a liquor license in America. So here, that's like a huge thing that people like... Sometimes they offer shisha at the shop, like, or drinks, like, so there's certain things that you can get away with here that I feel like are beneficial for your business, rather than in America, you won't be able to have that. Interesting. Well, um, look, if you do have a final message to people watching, what would that message be? Um, my final message would be like, trust yourself, believe in yourself, anything is possible. Um, a lot, and anytime somebody says you can't do it, prove to them that you can. Now, before I let you go, have you tried speaking with locals, convincing them that Africa has everything? Any of my friends that I talk to, I tell them that, yeah, do this business, yeah, do this business, because any business back home is beneficial for you. Like, even that I'm in the property business now, like, I'm telling people, like, buy land. Like, this is a good time when you have money to just put something out to say that you have something at home. Like, invest in your home country. Like, I'm all for it. And then what was what's the often res uh, response to you telling them not to travel? To I think at this point in time, so many people want to come back. Like, I feel like everybody's kind of seeing America as like, you know. It's yeah, they, it's a third world country with the Gucci belt, they say. <laughs> but yeah, so. I mean, men are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Living in Nigeria, um, I mean, how is the Nigerian men uh, treating the dating scene is crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> it's it's very crazy. I think misogyny misogyny is real here. This yeah. is where it's probably invented here. <laughs> but um, definitely, like yeah. um, dating has been an experience. I think somebody should create a dating app. Really? That should be the next on the list. Is a dating app for you know diasporans and people who want to find real love. What has been a challenge. So I think meeting people who are serious, mm -hmm. um, who are unmarried. Mm. Um, <laughs> so you guys have the same problem here? Yes, definitely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's married men dating, even married women dating that are spoiling the pond for us single people. So. Wow, I mean, so you've not been swept off your feet yet? No, I have not. So I'm still waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, the number is on the screen. <laughs> so shows is on the screen. I normally, I'm looking out for the men out there. No. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it's been a great conversation with Thank you. Thank you. I would like to come to your salon. I'm not sure. Is it that far? Is it far here? Um, it's in Lucky, not far from here. Maybe like 10, 15 minutes. Okay. I would like to go to the you know, restaurant, uh, her salon, you know, take some videos. Or even if I can, I'll make sure the bureaus are on the video. So they can get to see what you mean for yourself here in Nigeria. Thank you. Right, thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So guys, where we are currently filming is uh, Echo Hotel. Echo Hotel is located here in Nigeria, Lagos, uh, VI. If you're looking for a pristine place to stay with you know, nice amenities, 
Fox Water 24 7. Uh, this is the place for you. Uh, it's an amazing place. I'm, I've been here for 10 days now and trust it, it's amazing. There's almost an event here every day. Every day. This is a very like local, like I would say the downtown of VI. Yeah, and everybody comes here. Yes, everybody, big names, yeah. Literally. All right, so come check it out. And thank you so much for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Find the head details in the description as well as on the screen. And uh, without further ado, thank you so much uh, for being here. Thank, thank you. you. All right, so let's say bye-bye to the people watching. All right, Bye-bye.